So I, I just wrote down some summarizing comments about the impulse momentum theorem. Um, this is roughly a summary of how the math went. It just said that there is an ultimate change in the momentum of an object. That is, the initial and the final momentums have a difference. And that difference is equal to the um, total uh, net impulse delivered to the object. Uh, and the way that that impulse is delivered is by acting with a net force. So the net force um, acts from some t initial up to some final time. So it acts for a time duration or a time interval. And the impulse delivered during that time interval is equal to simply the difference in the value of the momentum at the end of the interval and the value of the momentum at the beginning of the interval. Yeah, uh, otherwise known as delta p. So you can say the impulse delivered to the object by a net force over the time interval is equal to the change in the momentum of the object over that time interval. Uh, and that's described as the impulse momentum theorem. So I wanted to put in that an aside. And the aside is to remind you of what the work energy theorem uh, looked like. This is the impulse momentum theorem. So I'm going to put a slash. Does not mean divide by. Uh, it just means um, slash. <laughs> so the work energy theorem, um, if you pretty sure I did it in my in an earlier video that I made. Uh, the work energy theorem, I think it really ought to be called work done by net force equals change in kinetic energy um, theorem. <laughs> so it does have something to do with work and energy, but it, in particular, I think this is the best way to write it. The work done by the net force is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. And what that looks like is here is the work done by the net force, and it is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. And I'd like you to notice the parallel between what the, if you, let me take the left-hand side here. This is the net impulse delivered to the particle or done to the to the object of mass m it's equal to delta p the impulse momentum theorem and the net work uh, changes kinetic energy theorem look, look at look at the similarity between these two things um, let me show you a big difference though uh, on the left hand side is SI units of force times time on the right hand side is SI units of kilograms meters per second. Uh, but the truth is, is one newton second equals one kilogram meter per second. That's a multiplication. Uh, this is absolutely true. Over here, I'll remind you the way you calculate the work done by the net force is you integrate this vector net force along a path that our particle traverses and you go from the beginning of the path to the end of the path like initial final I'll just call it R1 and R2 um, and you do this dot product and so this this is a small distance and this is a force that looks like Newton's meters on the left hand side and up here this is, if you think about what the kinetic energy is, it's, it's one half mv squared, right? So I'll just write it out really quickly. This is a v, say, final or number two squared minus one half mv one squared or initial squared, right? So the units on the right hand side in SI units is kilograms times meters per second all squared. So um, this is a uh, kilograms times meters squared per second squared. And it turns out that one Newton meter is equal to one kilogram, sorry, meter squared per second squared. This has a definition. It's got a special name called the joule, right? One 
joule. Momentum, no special name. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. But also, this is a vector equation. And this here is a scalar equation. This actually is only one equation. This, I'm calling it a vector equation, this means that in three-dimensional space, this is three equations. Um, one of them is what's the net impulse in the x direction? It's equal to the change in the momentum in the x direction. What's the net impulse in the y direction? It's equal to the change in the momentum in the y direction, etc. So um, this, in some sense, it's, it's, it's got some more information. Uh, yeah, if you consider an equation a piece of information, this has three pieces of information or three uh, structural requirements, and this only has one. Uh, the three get tied together in the dot product in this case. Um, I'll show you another kind of um, big deal uh, difference. It's got to do with these units. This is force acting in time. So if you know about your force in time, then this kind of uh, theorem might be your first step. But if instead you know how your force acts in position, this R, um, then if you know how, you, how the very same force, right, force can vary in time, that very same force can uh, vary over space, depends on how you're looking at the very same problem, the scenario. Um, yeah, the, these address the same problems force acting on mass, right, results in change in motion, but we can view the problems from sort of two different perspectives depending on whether or not we know about the force in time or we know about the um, force in space or in position. Uh, I think this is a very nice um, sort of summarizing uh, statement. Also gets you to rethink um, how you think about the work energy theorem. Okay, so um, Let's see, I think I will stop this video here.